Hey y'all, welcome to my channel, Nothing Editing. Today I have uh, some frozen pork loin. It's cut into steaks. Y'all can see it is frozen solid. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to add is a cup and a half of water. We're going to do this in the Fiberware uh, pressure cooker. I'm continuing the series on it. Okay, I have this um, Maggie uh, beef bouillon. I'm out of my better than bouillon, so we're going to be using that. That's a cup and a half of water, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of that. And give that a whisk. Hopefully, it combines fairly good. Okay, this is, smells pretty good. Okay, to that, everything going in here just about is frozen. I have a cup each. Here's a cup of frozen yellow onion, a cup of frozen celery going into the pot. All right, then I'm going to be adding some garlic, my minced garlic from the jar. I'll add one and a half to that. There we go. Done deal. Okay. I will be placing in my frozen pork loin. Now it's going to go in an angle as it falls. It will, I don't think I can press it down. If I can, that would be a lucky shot. There we go. It's in the pot. Let me rinse my hands. I think on top of that I will add that is the top of the meat there. I will be, I'll season it with a little uh, garlic powder here. A little dash of black pepper. I'll throw in a good measure. A little onion powder on top. We know the bottom of the meat's going to get seasoned first. All right, so there we go. All right, I'll bring you, let me see. Yeah, I'll bring y'all back as soon as I get the pot set up to cook. Okay, I'm wanting to place the lid on. It does have arrows right here and on the pot. Let's see if I can match them up. Y'all will hear music. If it matches up, you'll hear the music, which you just did. But All right, we got that. Okay, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going for the pressure release valve I want it to turn completely to the right all right I'll bring you back as soon as I set it okay I'm going to be using the uh, uh, steak meat setting on this so I'm going to go to take the menu to number five I'm going to hit the timer button now remember that meat's frozen so I'm going to go 45 minutes on that meat, due to the fact that it's frozen. Alright, I'm going to push the start button, and I will bring y'all back as soon as it's um, cooked for a full 45 minutes. I'm going, I'm not going to natural release it, I'm going to uh, release it, manually release it myself. And I'll take the lid off and we can see what it looks like together. Okay, y'all, the full 45 minutes is up, and I am going to release the pressure on this. Some people may not have followed the whole uh, series that I'm doing, so I want to uh, allow them to be able to see it depressurizing. Okay, basically, that's what it looks like when it starts depressurizing. I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, it's not done, but I want y'all to focus on this red button. Red button, out. Y'all see the red button? <laughs> when it drops, that's when you totally know it's depressurized. From there, we'll go to seeing the goodness in the pot. All right, it dropped. All right, let me reposition this camera. Right. Right there. 
I'm gonna have to bring it up a little bit and then angle it down so y'all can see everything in the pot. And I have to, of course, move my mess out of the way. This is gonna be a two uh, step procedure in this pot. I want a one pot meal. And I couldn't make up my mind what I actually wanted. Did I want uh, pork uh, and mashed potatoes? Did I want pork and rice? I just couldn't figure it out. So, oh, okay. That, all right. That looks pretty well cooked. Let me get this out. Hopefully, it's supposed to be pork steaks, but it's staying together, but it's tender, y'all. Oh. Too tender. <laughs> I don't care, y'all. I love the bloopers. Yep, this meat is definitely cooked. <laughs> All right, let me get another tool. This I knew not to use a fork. Come on. Okay. But hey, this is nothing etiquette, right? I'm allowed to make these type of mistakes, and y'all get to see it. Well, come on now. I don't want a 50-minute video. <sighs> Quite a bit of liquid came out of that, but that's okay. I'm going to guesstimate, y'all, that that's roughly two cups of uh, liquid in there. Now uh, that's one thing I'm going to do. The other thing I'm going to do is I was going to do. And I'm looking for. I put my dishes up out of dishwasher. I'd know where they were at, huh? All right, I'm going to taste this sauce or liquid. Mm. Okay, that tastes pretty good, but I don't like the color. Now, in past videos, y'all saw where I made this jar of uh, dried homemade gravy mix. And that's what I'm going to be adding to that. I'm going to be adding, because I want some color in that, y'all. That's just too black. I'm going to put two tablespoons of my homemade dried brown gravy mix. Um, I'll leave a link in the bottom to that. All right, with that, I'm going to stir a whisk. Whisk that brown gravy mix up in there, get the lumps out, because it will be lumpy because I put it in hot liquid that's fine now that looks that looks like something was eating right there yeah it didn't when i took that lid off <laughs> all right i'm going to be adding to that three quarters of a cup of parboiled rice i'm gonna give that a stir i want like i said i want a one pot meal now it may come out a little soupy that's fine because it will be like rice and gravy Rice and gravy soupy. You know, you put that gravy on that rice and, you know, it's a liquid. So I'm going to place my pork back in there. Mm. It's falling all apart, y'all. That, that was a perfect timing for me because I like, as y'all know, well know, I want the meat that I cook to fall apart. And it did do that. I'm trying to get all the, all the little bits in there. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna slide that off in there. I want the, yeah, I want them juices in there. Make sure that meat's down in there really good. All right, so I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna put the lid on it and then I'll bring you back for the rice setting part of it. Let's see if I can match the arrows up and make the sound. There we go, I'm going to clip the pressure valve. Okay, I'm going to set it. Now, what I've noticed about this particular brand, this barberware, fiberware, however you want to pronounce it, on the rice setting, you don't have a choice. You uh, <laughs> come down here and you find the rice, it's number three, you push the menu on number three. See, I'm going to push that cook timer. There is no choice. So, basically, you start it. And I will let y'all know what it says on the, uh, when it comes up to pressure, I will let y'all know if it's 14 minutes, 16 minutes, or 18 minutes because in the uh, manual it says uh, on rice cooking, cooking it's anywhere from 14 to 18 minutes. So far I've only seen it come up to uh, the 18 minute, I mean to the 14 minute 
cook time, but I will let y'all know. All right, to be continued. Okay, y'all, I want y'all to see this setting. This means it's keeping warm when you see the OH. It's keeping warm. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to let this naturally natural release for 10 minutes. I have a timer here set for it, and I will bring y'all back uh, at that time point. I just find that rice seems to cook better or turn out better if I let it release naturally for 10 minutes, and of course, there's always a little steam left in it, but I'll bring y'all back when I get ready to take the lid off, and we'll see this together. Okay, it's set for 10 minutes now. I'm going to release it. Hopefully it's not too much and too long. But this, I'm doing this again for those who haven't seen it yet. Naturally release. I uh, do recommend you go back and watch the whole series. Uh, because you get to see my bloopers and my mess ups. Um, name of my channel's nothing else. If, I'm, if something just don't go right, y'all don't see it. Y'all uh, watch for that. Get as close as I can. Hopefully, y'all can see the red pin right here. When that drops, the pressure's released completely. If this takes too long, I'm gonna pause it and come back. There we go. All right, we are going to see what's in the pot together. All right. Y'all hear that? All right. Okay. Looks like it's got a little gravy in there. That's fine. That's what I'm looking for. Let's see if I can get y'all a little closer to that pot so y'all can see what's in it. Angle that camera maybe a little better. I'm hoping y'all can see that. Oh, I know I have very bad lighting. Oh, yes. That's going to be just like rice and gravy. Oh, my goodness. Look, y'all. The rice did. I'm gonna go ahead and break that meat up. Is this what that is? It's not break it up into pieces. So when I serve it, it's a one bowl deal. All right, let me get me a little spoon here. Take. Uh, we know the meat's tender. I'm gonna taste that rice. Make sure it's tender. It looks tender to me, y'all. All right, give me a second. Mmm. Oh, y'all. Y'all, that flavor went all in that rice. It, okay. The idea of adding the uh, brown gravy mix, my uh, homemade brown uh, dry gravy mix, was an excellent idea. Yes. You could probably use a package of brown gravy mix. I'm going to taste the meat now. Mm. Tender, moist, mm. and flavorful. Okay, y'all. That, uh, that's a wrap on this. <laughs> One pot. Now, if you didn't want your meat crumbled up like that, you wouldn't have to. But I prefer it that way. Easier to eat. All right, y'all. I'll serve it up in a bowl and show y'all that. That's a done deal. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, it took 14 minutes for the rice part of it to cook. I'm sorry, I left that out. Okay, y'all, there it is, all uh, bowled up. And if you noticed, I added some um, nacho jalapeno pepper uh, slices to it for a garnish. Um, I actually got these, believe it or not. Um, these I got from Dollar Tree, and uh, they are very good. They're not hot at all. They have a bite, but they're not hot. And I will probably get me a spoon and spoon a little of the jalapeno uh, juice over the top of it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and by all means, leave a comment. And y'all have a great day.